Hi everybody and welcome. We're going to be doing uh, standard three today. Uh, let's take a look. Sorry, this one right here. Uh, standard three. Students construct and judge the validity of a logical argument and give counterexamples to disprove a statement. So standard three is problems eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve in the star packet. So let's look at problem eight. Problem eight says two lines in a plane always intersect in exactly one point. Well, we can imagine that any flat surface is a plane, so let's say that this paper is a plane. Um, here's one line. Now, it goes indefinitely, so any other line that goes a different direction will eventually cross it at some point. But it's possible to have another line that runs next to it. And of course, this relationship, as you can see, is that they are parallel. So this is the counterexample, because this is the only example where two lines in the same plane will never intersect. So that is number eight. Number nine, which figure can serve as a counterexample to the conjecture below? So again, it's a counterexample, an example that proves the conjecture is false. If one pair of opposite sides of a quadrilateral is parallel, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Well, let's start by making parallel sides. These ones are parallel. Now, and I'll mark them parallel. These are parallel sides. Now, if this side here and this side here are not parallel, then it's not a parallelogram. Um, a parallelogram, all four sides would be opposite, or would be parallel to their opposite side. So what we have here is a rectangle, definitely not. Is a rhombus, definitely not. Is a square, definitely not. Is it a trapezoid? Yes, it's a trapezoid. So that's your answer. It's a trapezoid because one pair of sides is parallel. Number 10. TRAP is an isosceles trapezoid with diagonals RP and TA. Which of the following must be true? Okay, a problem like this, you definitely need to draw something. So an isosceles trapezoid, here's what we know about isosceles trapezoids. The bases are parallel and the legs are congruent. And it says that TRAP are the vertices. And then the diagonals are RP, so this is diagonal RP, and diagonal TA. Okay, so what must be true? Well, uh, let's think about this. These two diagonals are definitely congruent, so RP is going to be congruent to TA. But I don't think that they're, um, I don't think they cut each other in half equally. I think that this section is longer than this section. Um, let's see what the questions are. RP is perpendicular to TA? No, that's not a 90 degree angle. No way. Um, RP is parallel to, D, to TA? That's actually impossible because they intersect, so they can't be parallel. RP is congruent to TA? I think that's what we just said. I'm going to mark that. I think that makes sense. RP bisects TA? They're not cutting each other in half because if they were, then this segment would be the same length as this segment. So it does, they don't bisect each other. The only thing that is clear is that the two diagonals are congruent Therefore, C is your answer. All right, number 11. Your conditional statement is shown below. If a quadrilateral has perpendicular diagonals, so perpendicular means 90 degree intersection diagonals, then it is a rhombus. So what we want to find is one that has perpendicular diagonals that's not a rhombus. So this one here definitely has perpendicular diagonals. This one also. This one also has perpendicular diagonals. This one doesn't. So this one cannot be the answer. So we're looking for which one of these is not a rhombus. So a rhombus, let's think about what a rhombus is. It's four congruent sides. So does this one have four congruent sides? No. So I think that might be the answer. I'll just put a little mark to show that that might be the answer. Does this one have four congruent sides? It sure looks like it. That's a rhombus, so that can't be the answer. And this one, I know it's kind of a trick. You think, well, that's a square, it's not a rhombus, but here's the thing. It has four congruent sides, so even though it is a square, it's also a rhombus. So, uh, a square is a special kind of rhombus, so it still is a rhombus, leaving A as the only one that does have perpendicular diagonals but is not a rhombus. It is, in fact, a kite. Okay, next, number 12. Students in a class uh, rewrote theorems in their own words. One student wrote the following statement. The area of a parallelogram is the product of any base and any height. So basically they're saying B times H. Uh, but the keywords here is any and any. 
uh, we're going to find that it's not always true. So we're going to look for a counterexample to prove the statement is false. So sure, parallelogram is base times height, but there's a key uh, relationship the base and height must have, and it's this. The base must be perpendicular to the height. If the base is not perpendicular to the height, then it can't count. So in this case, here's the base, here's the height, they're perpendicular. So A does fit the theorem, therefore A cannot be our answer because, again, we're looking for a counterexample. So A cannot be our answer. In B, they've assigned a different base and height, but if you look, they're still perpendicular. They still have a 90 degree intersection, therefore B fits the theorem and cannot be our answer. C, we have the base up here now and the height here, but again, if these are parallel and this is perpendicular, then this is also perpendicular. Uh, therefore, this fits the theorem and cannot be our answer. D, now D is a little different. Here's the base and here's the height. They are not perpendicular to each other. So this is the one that is the counterexample. If you're calling this the base and this is the height, then that is not going to get you a base times height formula for the area of this parallelogram. So D is your counterexample. And that's it for Standard 3. Thank you very much, and tune in for Standard 4. Bye.